Hello everybody, welcome to the second semi-final of the NAF kickoff event. We've got Call Troop with his humans. And uh, it's an interesting human build. Only two guards, a block catcher, a tackle blitzer, a mighty blow blitzer, and uh, a leader thrower. And the craziest thing about this human team is it's beaten two lizards to get to this match. It's beaten Dwarves, two Lizards, and Underworld. So it's had an amazing run already. Unbelievable. But I mean, only two guard. To have beaten two Lizardmen teams with only two guard seems crazy to me. Um, up against, and he's got, so he's got three rerolls and an Apple and 13 players. Due to having the leader. Uh, Fonzo, on the other hand, is pretty standard Lizards with two re-rolls, 12 players rather than an apple, and no chameleon skink. So, you know, and obviously five block. There's no real other option than five block. Knuckle dusters. Huge. Who got the knuckle, the knuckle dusters? The lizard men. Oh, God. Disgusting. Disgusting. A free mighty blow. Saurus blocker for the half. Very powerful. Is it the half? I think it's the half. Or maybe the drive. Could just be the drive, now that I think about it. Drive. There you go. This is NAF! Yes, this is it. This is the NAF. I definitely want the humans, because, uh, you know, dwarves cannot beat lizardmen at all. So, we really, really, really want the humans to win. <laughs> um, so, I mean, I think the lizards are more likely to win. Um, but, as I say, Call Troop has already beaten two lizards on his way here. I don't really know how, because he's only got two guards. Um, but there you go. Obviously, he must, he must know how to beat them. He must be able to play well or roll well. Um, unbelievable. Unbelievable. Enough has finally come, yep. Are we in for some high-quality blood ball? Maybe. I mean, maybe. Who knows, eh? Doesn't get the additional hit, so I guess he's going to pull this blitzer back as well then. Like, he, but he could still blitz it, couldn't he? That's pretty weird that he didn't push it there. Because he could have had a free, a free blitz, like even if he's going to move him back to there or something. Like, that could have just been a blitz, right? I get it. I mean, he could have won in nine. This this is super weak, isn't it? This player, this player is getting mighty blowed here, directly by this Saurus. And if he gets powered. It's uh, it's bad times. He doesn't get powered. Look a dog. <laughs> that would have been a gaping hole if he'd gone down. Yep, I mean I've had some really lucky dice. Right, my my two games versus the lizards had some crazy lucky dice. Like you just have to, you just have to have luck versus lizards. You you ain't gonna beat them. You ain't gonna beat lizards if you don't get lucky. Basically, with 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 some teams, you know, elves can beat them without getting lucky. Underworld can beat them without getting lucky. But uh, a normal team has got to get lucky to beat lizards, basically. Most teams, their whole team, can't fight seven big guys. And I mean, here we see it, right? I go, okay, he's got the next of three here, but even if these two were up here, it basically his whole team can't fight just the Saurus and Crocs. And then when you've got the Skinks on top, it's ludicrous. Absolutely ludicrous. And the lack of guard is just brutal. Like, I really don't know what the plan is. <laughs> Maybe it's lots of 1Ds. <laughs> like, turn two, <laughs> the opening play is a 1D. <laughs> it's awful. <laughs> it's, ju it's just awful. Your opening play on turn two. 
on your reception is a wandy. And he's just literally not getting better than that. Horrible. The skinks are all ready to run through and swarm if they if they get the chance. I like this. I like having them a bit tighter behind. Uh, Noxa, who I played, he just like his he kept his really safe behind and uh, you know still dominated with seven big guys. But it's good if you can get them on the fringe so they can like you know give assists and stuff or cancel things or do the odd thing. This is BB three. With uh, Blood Bowl 2 skills and uh, graphics turned down so it looks a bit brighter and nicer. <laughs> you wouldn't think turning the graphics down would make it look better, but there you go, it does. And he skulls out. Oh man, this is just awful. It's a sh and like we can't even watch the replays. I mean, I guess I, did his, uh, I think his quarterfinal was against was against the dwarves, right? The five guard dwarves. But, um... <laughs> Four plus dot. Like, it's just brutal. <laughs> Everything he's doing is terrible. Like, like, I mean, not his player, but, like, you know, the only, um... You, they, they only exist for a, a, a day. The replays only exist for a day, and then they are gone. Whew. Whew. So there you go, he makes a bunch of dice rolls. And, uh, like, yeah, it's it's not that he's playing terribly, it's just like the odds of everything is terrible because lizards are fucking beyond broken. <laughs> there you go, there's the, there's, you can download those and uh, make, make your icons look like Blood Bowl 2 if you want. So now, if he doesn't follow, he might come through, might he might come through the hole. Not blitzing with that uh, Saurus. So he's not coming through the hole. Interesting. Well, might he blowing the guards pretty good, isn't it? He doesn't have to come through now anyway, right? In fact, it might even be better for him to keep it split like this. This might actually be preferable to keep it kind of split. Because, like, this is a bit dangerous, right? If he boneheads, he doesn't. Um, if he boneheaded, that skink was getting 3D'd. Could have just left him off. Like, honestly, he doesn't have to come through, right? He doesn't have to come through in pressure. And in fact, what he's done is expose the skink to a hit there. Um this one here because like call troops last turn was horrific right it was horrific and he doesn't need to burst through and put pressure on because already he's got three away and he's he's got eight trying to fight seven so he, he doesn't need to do this this is just giving a uh, call troop basically a free chance to remove a skink interesting super interesting Of course he does with the skink and castles him. Oh look, what a surprise. Jim's right, what? And like what what did that give him? Do you know what I mean? What did those skinks what were these skinks doing here? They're nothing. Literally nothing. Could have just kept your skinks back here. What's he gonna do there? Like do a 1D? <laughs> do you know what I mean? <laughs> Dodge out everybody on threes and fours? Like his last turn was Horrific. So just keep him in, the, keep him under the cosh. There's no need to uh, run through with these skinks. Like it just really isn't. I 
I wouldn't say killing scenes is winning the game yet, but it was more just uh The reason that killing the skinks is a bad plan is because people generally don't let you hit their skinks for no reason. <laughs> but in this case, he did get to hit his skink for no reason. Oh, he hit with him! Not what I would have done. I mean, if he hit with a mighty blow, then that frees up this lineman to come in here and get the uh, ogre hit. Or there for a 1D into an ogre 2. That was pretty weird. Maybe he's going to uphill because he hasn't got block. But I think the 1D from the mighty blow is way better than the 1D from the skill of slamming. Yeah, and there you go. Look, he makes this dodge. <laughs> I mean, if that fails, he just gets the ball hit. That was a... Uh... Like, I mean, these skinks aren't doing anything, are they? <laughs> it was really, really weird by... Uh... By Fonzo. How can you tell which player has done its move? Uh, they get the red, the red line, the red ring around their other wing. I put these rings on so you can tell which of the catches. The catches, the sign ones, the blitzers are the yellows, the throwers purple. Of you know, and obviously the you don't need the rings for the uh, lizards because it's pretty obvious which are the saurus and which are the skinks. And which is the crops. But I think it's somewhat helpful to have it for the uh, humans. Oh, it was the, the ogre stood up, had it? Oh, I didn't realise the ogre stood up. But he could have still run out and done this 1D, right? I didn't realise it would be knocked over. But still, just freeing people, right? You want to free people against this against this horrible thing. You want to free players up. Come in there for a 1D and then have the assist next to it is okay. Also, the Crocs could have blocked that lineman and freed this uh, Saurus up as well. He didn't bother. Uh, yeah, it's, it's it says W, but it's Z. It's, or V. V, is it? V? Z. It's Z. Because of the French keyboard, it's actually Z. They just haven't changed the... Uh, the picture doesn't get a power gain. He desperately wants to base the ball, doesn't he? You can see, you can see he really wants to base the ball. Not the best turn for the lizards here, is it, really? I think the uh, skink will come in again to get the uh, ogre hit again. Yeah, like this skink, I mean, you can base it, but it's not doing anything. He's just going to hit you with tackle, right? Like, if anything, you should bring this guy back around. Oh, wow. He's putting both the skinks in for a 2D on the guard. So now the humans could uh, blitz this, or even block this Saurus, and then hit the Crocs, but I mean, it doesn't do a lot, does it? It sucks that he's down to one reroll already, like in three turns he's down to one reroll. Because just everything he's doing is like a 3 plus or a 1D or something, it's like... You can put in three players to get a blitz through here and run through a blitz, but then so what? <laughs> Dodge it. Like, it's just help. It's so hopeless. It's so hopeless. I'm glad I didn't have to commentate on my own match because my own match was the same. It's just like everything you can do is just awful. Like, how do you even get 2Ds? Oh, yeah, of course. By not making that, he had the ogre hit on that. One of the few ways he could get a 2D. Would have loved the power there. He could have run straight through, couldn't he? That would have been an amazing power. Can't. You just can't reroll it, though, can you? There's no way you can reroll it. But of course, now the big problem is here. 
if that crocs activates and hits the ogre, he's freed up a block saurus. Oh no! <laughs> You've got one reroll, can you really spend it on turn four? But can you afford to not spend it? <sighs> Sideline cage? I think sideline cage is the only way you can possibly protect the ball here. Okay, yeah, well, I mean, that's basically a sideline cage. Because it's just so easy for to free up uh, Saurus, right? Both of these Saurus can get freed up easily. Now he's got it in a bludger at least. Gets to hit Skinks. That's good. I mean, that it is good, right? Like, it's... You're getting the chance to get lucky there, so you might as well take it and see if you can do something to them. So you have to start off with a mighty blow hit on this guard, then this block on this guy, see if you power him. And if you power him, then this, so this guy can come through. But he doesn't power him. So now you can delay the crocs block here for a while. I'd have done I'd have done this hit first just to it's mighty blow, right? Just get your mighty blow hit in first. <laughs> get your mighty blow hit in first. I think is uh usually a pretty good idea. Oh, so, he's gonna, so now because he got the push there, he brings in the skinks so he can hit with a block saurus and then just move the crocs. I like maybe blitz the crocs in here or something, but you know, not going to do the risky block with the crocs now. Okay, he is going to do the risky block with the crocs now. <laughs> so the skink didn't really do a whole lot where he was standing, uh, just making it risky if the uh, crocs boneheaded. Oh. I think he thought that was a 2D. <laughs> I think he thought that was like <laughs> cancelling them and making it a 2D, but obviously it wasn't. So he goes for the 2D. Does he pin him against the sideline? Does he pin him against the sideline? Or does he just push him and not follow? He's almost got to pin him because there's like, there's a channel to escape with him putting both skinks over there and stuff. He just pushes him back and doesn't follow. So somehow the game's got a bit stretched. And the humans might have something here, some kind of breakaway, some kind of desperation handoff play. Potentially. Maybe get a bit of strength in the middle here, maybe they can knock down both these Saurus. Actually getting to make two dice blocks. I feel like just pushing him up and not following and blitzing the mighty blow one was better to be honest. Because this mighty blow's hitting your card. And who's doing your blitz? Maybe some kind of chain, I don't think so though. You could like uphill him to push him to there, and then uphill him there, and then uphill surf him. I mean, maybe. Oh, there you go, just do that. <laughs> That's not 
reserves. <laughs> There's no reserves. There you go. 11, 10, injured. But again, right, that could have been this mighty blow guy. And I'm now, okay, it doesn't really make any difference after the drive, but I still did prefer just p pushing him away and blitzing this one. Really nice. But who's going to blitz? I mean, he could have blitzed, right? He could have just blitzed and repositioned after the hit. Is this guy... He can't double GFI 1D. That's pretty crazy. Oh, the tackler dodges and hits a skink. Is that what's happening? The tackler dodges and hits a skink. No, it just didn't blitz. Okay. Well, I think the tackle, a dodge, hit a skink is actually a pretty decent play, isn't it? That's a pretty decent play. But then I guess you just that leaves a that leaves a Saurus free that then hits the ball, so it's not that good a play. <laughs> not actually that good a play. But yeah, now all of a sudden he's got like five players in the middle, six players in the middle here, and uh, two Saurus are tagged off. This Saurus is tagged off. Crocs is tagged off. Saurus tagged off. And, uh, yeah, you know the movements of the humans? He's removed that skink. And the Saurus. Nothing removed of his own. Two men up. Pretty amazing. Doesn't get the knockdown there. Is he going to croc splits to like get the crocs in front of these two? Because no one else has blitzed yet. This one maybe could have blitzed, right? Because he was pushing him to put him, stick him onto this one. So maybe he could have done this block first. And then blitz with him and then one, two, three, four, five. And got him somewhere relevant. Or like here. Yeah, he's just got a screen with the two skinks, which obviously isn't great at all, is it? And if this might, you also he, he does go for the croc splits. Oh, he dumps skulls! He eats it! Oh my god, chaos himself! <laughs> well, this is how you beat lizards, easy! <laughs> easy. <laughs> and now he can three dice this skink, and then blitz this guy, and then push through. Oh my god. Oh, he's not going there. I mean, that, that was greedier. This way he just needs the push. I mean, he needs the push either way, right? But I would have liked to have 3D first. And see if I'd got the... Uh... I guess you just go through this way anyway, right? Even with the, Even if you make this can still go through there because there's two swords over here so you still want to be going up this way anyway we're getting into saurus dodge territory now somehow like it's amazing isn't it how absolutely horrendous it was for the humans on the first couple of turns and all the dice they were rolling from turn one of their own drive into like somehow everything's fine, just amazing. Gets the pow. And the removal. <laughs> Flip me. Get the dodge off to retag the Saurus, lovely. Yeah, I think that was probably correct to try and uh, <laughs> get, get KO'd. <laughs> to go, what, one, two, three, four, and then that gives you the 2D and gets you off uh, getting surf. Wow, he apples the KO. I mean, it is the tackler, I guess. Really getting value for, like, 
numbers, right? He's got two reserves, so. So now neither side with an apple. And the lizards are capped at 10. And down a Saurus, whatever happens. Yeah, and I guess actually having a blodged carrier is pretty good, isn't it, versus lizards? Because the strength 2 is just the same as strength 3 a lot of the time. If they don't have an assist, it's exactly the same. And then obviously lizards can't have tackles, so... Maybe humans are like a decent matchup against lizards. Well, they're not, are they? Because they couldn't do anything for the first 3 or 4 turns. <laughs> but they've got some good desperation stuff about them. They've got to, oh my god, he's just going for a one day. Just trying to roll a full pow. Let's go for the six plus. If you're gonna go for the six plus there, I think it'd be better off just going for the five plus here. And uh you know, two or three dicing him. Because this guy could have come here, right? And then he could have assisted, and then he could have blitzed. Obviously, mighty blow a skink and uh, make a cage. He can block, he can tag Saurus. Yeah, I had to move him first so that. Well, not really, because he could just blitz him in a different direction. Is he blitzing him into an extra hit? Surely not. He is. That seems very bangery. I feel like you want to get, you know, downfield in a nice little cage rather than get this extra hit. But obviously he thinks he doesn't need that at all. Just going to go there with the thrower there, I guess. Maybe one over. Oh, well, he's, he's too late now. Maybe one over was better, right? So that this guy just couldn't even base the ball. Ooh, he didn't need a GFI, did he? Just didn't need this GFI. Absolutely not needed. Could have just stood here. This is a mistake. A complete mistake. Burns his last reroll as well. It was just not need, not need, no one near needed. He could have been here. How many did he do? Just did the one GFI. Like but this was fine. That's so weird. Like I think he would have been all right. Very strange to do a GFI there. Maybe he just didn't see it was a GFI. It's the only thing that makes sense. It's really weird, isn't it? It doesn't make any sense making that GFI, so he must have just misclicked. It like, must have been a misclick. Miss C. It could, yeah, but also it could, but I mean, it's so unlikely, the skink bullshit. They've got to make all the three pluses, then they've got to hit you on 2D, then they've got to get the 30% pow. And then you've got to get the three and eight scatter out. I think it's fine to stand there to not get hit by. A, I, I'm more. I'm more concerned about getting based by a Saurus than I am about somebody rolling all of the dice. But that was really weird. This. This GFI. It must just have to be a mistake, didn't it? There, lucky. Fails the one in nine. And now we get three D mighty blow, but no re-roll. So if this is a triple skull. No touchdown. It's not a triple skull. Oh, the Samba doesn't work anymore, Aurelius, because the EAB is dead, of course. Well, the Samba command doesn't work anymore. Obviously, you can go to Samba. And, uh, 
view it. Wow. Well, there you go. And then, so three eighths of that, so what's that, like 9%? It goes out of bounds. Whereas the Saurus facing you was two two pluses. <laughs> I mean, he was always going to try and hit him, yeah. But I, don't, I just don't understand that GFI. Was he going to try two and then... Uh, would, the, if, would, would the double GFI have made it safe from the skinks? I don't think so, right? It just... I'm, I'm, I'm thinking... I think it's just a misclick. <laughs> I am dry, yes, I'm in the final, ready to play the winner of this match, which uh, it's looking pretty decent for, for Call Troop. He's removed a Saurus. The Lizards are capped at 10. I'm cheering on Call Troop 100, 1 million percent if I was Daedal. Yeah. <laughs> I've already got lucky twice against lizards. I don't want to have to get lucky a third time against them. This doesn't seem a very good defensive setup, does it? But I guess he. Uh... Still needs a lot of pushes, doesn't he? The quick snap. Ooh, that's interesting. So can he use that quick snap to, to get an extra one? Probably not. Probably this this skink should have been here, right? And then he could have put that skink there. That would have been really nice. Really nice. He should have thought about the quick snap, honestly. I was I was just talking about that today. I was I was just talking about that today, playing my orcs. That that will affect one turns, right? The quick snap not being able to do it with the guys on the LOS. So you've got to think about that when you're setting up your one turns and had Fonzo thought about it, maybe this skink goes here, so on the quick snap it can go there, and uh, that might have been very good. Looks like he is using the whole method. Oh, also he should have st started here, right? So that on a quick snap he could have just gone there and started it with a block, and then opened up a lot more opportunities there. I don't like using the whole method, but this isn't uh, this isn't like a super great thing. I guess you would have had to what put in two skinks here and then blitz there or something. It seems like he hasn't got enough players uh, being one down, but even if he did, like, this seems a pretty decent setup, to be honest. Defensive setup. He's just starting with a 1D. That's crap, but he gets the push. I think you've got to start off with better than a 1D. Um, but. Maybe not. He 
can dodge around with a skink to fill in. He's going to have to dodge around with a skink to fill in this. He's got to block with this guy. I guess he, this skink could come here and then 3D with the crocs because he's got no reroll. So that that's literally better, right? It's the better play there, 100%. He's just somehow not got follow-up blocks. Which is weird, isn't it? But the, the better play was for this skink to go here and then 3D with the crocs, right? Because then you just got more chance of a push. With three dice. <laughs> then two dice. It's... Oh, he can push the ogre! He can push the ogre! Oh, man! Yes, it's still on. It's still on. It's very difficult, but it's on. So the crocs can go, what? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Oh, no, not really. It's a six plus dodge for the crocs. Or a 5 plus for the Saurus. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Double GFI. So 5 plus double GFI for the Saurus. And then this skink makes a million dodges to there. And then this skink uphills the Ogre to push him to here. But it's still possible. I think he's not going to go for it. <laughs> no, he's not. Is he going to foul? He can't foul the ogre. You can't foul the ogre. Oh my god. Not what I would have done. <laughs> who, can, who can say if it's good or bad? It's a completely valid thing to do. Just personal preference. <laughs> Pros and cons. <laughs> seems crazy to me he's thick skull i mean and he hasn't got guard i mean he is kind of a pin you know like you are down a saurus but that seems pretty like a desperation move right it seemed a pretty desperation move i don't think you should be desperate yet as the lizards like obviously it's not great being one nil down the only way you're winning this is through overtime and you're already reduced you're capped at 10 already you haven't done a great job of protecting your stink skinks from getting hit. And it's going to probably be hard on offense to stop them getting hit, especially as you're starting down a Saurus. So it's not it's not looking good for the lizards. It's not looking good for the lizards, but I'm not sure it was desperate enough to foul the ogre. Yeah. It is a big balls move, but I just think like you've just got better you've I just think it's much better to do it turn one of the second half, foul this guy, right? Or foul this guy. Like, foul one of these on turn one of the second half so the KO is way better and stuff. Do you know what I mean? Like, it just seems... It just seems way, way, way stronger to, like, even if you're feeling that way, to, to do it in the second half. Yeah. So he, he must be feeling desperate to have done it. Must be. Playoff nerves? Maybe. Art loves to take the piss out of that, but it is a thing, you know, like it's... I don't even know what the feeling is when you're in these big games, but like, you know, it does... It does feel like something's happening. <laughs> Um, do you know what I mean? Like I, I don't, I don't know what it is, but like you know, you're like, ooh, and uh, 
you know, not nervous, is it? I don't know what it is, but uh, whatever it is, you do feel it. And uh... <laughs> yeah, one thing one thing art can never be accused of is having second round <laughs> chalice nerves. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't want to just, you know, get the cheap joke in there because he does, he does like, he does like mocking the whole, uh, he does, he does do like mocking the whole chalice nerves thing. But it is different. It is different playing, playing in like a knockout thing, you know. The pressure. Which <laughs> the copy. I mean, I do, I do like, I do like mentioning it. Don't get me wrong. I just thought this wasn't the time or the place. <laughs> it is a funky setup, isn't it? <laughs> oh, so he just pushes him straight back and injures him. Oh my god! Huge, huge. Well, there you go. He doesn't need to foul that guy. You see, so my idea was to foul this guy because that'd be better. But he doesn't even have to do that. I would have blitzed him from here, from here actually. Right, push him, power him to there, and then you can put in two assists and foul him with a skink here. Like if if that's what you want to do, that high rolly foul. That's when I've done it, but there you go, he just pushes him straight back, casts him, and he gets his high roll that he was willing to expend a skink for earlier. So that certainly does redress, well, it redresses the balance on the drive, 10v10. Obviously the, the humans do have reserves for overtime, but uh, that sure helps Fonzo a lot for this drive. Unfortunately for Jim. <laughs> Let's hope some sores get killed. I guess uh, Cold Troop is just going to try and like keep his tackler screened and hope that uh, you know he gets to do something with him at some point. Because <laughs> things can happen, can't they, in a game of Blood Bowl? So just like hanging in and hoping, hoping something happens is a pretty valid strat a lot of the time. Looks like he's going to stick with his plan of pairing off the Saurus and then trying to hit the Skinks or hunt the Skinks. Hang in and hope for a miracle. I mean, it's pretty much all you can do versus lizard men a lot of the time. In that format. <laughs> oh, about a billion to one, Tom. I can't see Gautier ever explaining the randoms. Choice, honestly. It was three weeks ago since he said he'd do it as soon as possible, and he hasn't done it, so... Does that make you think he's about to do it any day now? <laughs> or does that make you think it's not going to happen? <laughs> he could, uh... He could put this, the catcher on a Saurus, right? This uh, <laughs> this blitz is getting surfed right now, so he'd, he'd better tag that Saurus. He 
does it with a tackler. I'm not sure about that. I feel like maybe the, the, the catcher does the tag, right? Because then it's a, you know, the dodge protects him. And then you keep your tackler back. Like, I thought his whole strat was going to be guarding the tackler. At all costs. But yeah, I mean, he had to tag there. Otherwise, otherwise this sword is going to just gone here, hit him, chained out the guard, like putting a skink here. <laughs> hey, that that might happen though, Dwight. That's the thing. This, that actually could happen. I actually wanted the difference between this and Gautier's data is I wanted paint the the channel point list. <laughs> I really do want to do that, and he really doesn't want to tell you about the data. <laughs> can just have a full side switch from those lizards, right? They can put a uh, skink in here, block that guy. Crocs can hit the guy in front of him. Um, these two skinks can run over here. This skink can run over here. He can dodge off at the end. That's one option. The other option is the two. Stun him. Well, the VIPs were told there was data, um, but they weren't shown it. So, you know. This is uh, not good enough, is it? This isn't what I would call good enough. This is a armor break. Oh my god, so lucky. Removes him. So he's got a few options, right? He can uh, he can cancel here. He can two D here, and then he he can blitz. So he can go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven GFI hit, or he can uh, cancel these two one D here, and if it's a pow run through here and not hit the ball. So that, does, that doesn't look as good, does it? He can hit the ball or he can, uh, he could blitz this, oh, so he, could, he could blitz this skink. Nah, he still couldn't stand in there though. Surfing this Soros would be nice, wouldn't it? Surfing the Soros would be nice, but you can't really get in there. Like if he could run through here, he could blitz him, but he couldn't, he couldn't get in there. Like honestly, doing this crazy blitz on the ball and then you and then you could do this one D and then he could run or uphill and then he could run through or something. I don't know. It doesn't seem very good, does it? But you might as well have a go, right? Not even use any rerolls on it, just give it a go. Maybe you don't, I don't know. It's tough, isn't it? Like steal yourself for overtime. Try and just hold the centre and stall. You don't your ogre getting surfed is a bit of a problem. It's a bit of a problem, you don't really want your old ogre getting served here. <laughs> yeah. Expect a shift within the top five, maybe. But he's gonna blitz him. With tackle. I mean, the ogre can't follow here, right? Because it could get served. I guess it can't get served because the Saurus. Ooh, it maybe it's good, actually. Oh, it definitely could. <laughs> oh, he injures the Saurus! Yes! <laughs> oh, <laughs> glorious ogre. That's why he went for the foul. Oh, baby. Oh, that's amazing. It's 
actually amazing. It is mental, yeah. By the way, you can totally surf the ogre. Like, easily. You can easily surf the ogre. Right now. One million percent easily surfable ogre. And I don't know how you can protect him realistically. Well, he's not protected him. So, you very simply make this block <laughs> and get a push. Now your Crox is free. He can block him on 2D. If you push him, it's better. Um, if you power him, it's no problem. But pushing him is best. And then you can put your Skink here and then he does the Blitz, but he's already activated him. Well... But there you go. Um, that's not so good, is it? Like, you can just uphill him now, right? You can just uphill the ogre here. It still maybe is okay to just put in the skink in the front and go for the uphill. Not terrible. But it would have been really good to have just crocs blitzed. I mean, realistically, you could have... Uh, Maybe could have tried to free up him with a Crocs first or something, so you would have rerolls on this. But I think the uphill ogre surf is fine actually, because it's getting a bit desperate now, right? Down to Saurus. Well, you can just uphill block him as well, but then you then you're getting counter surfed yourself. Whereas if you uphill if you uphill surf him from it, like with a blitz, then you're not getting counter surfed. Oh, he's just running through. He's ignoring the ogre and running through the middle. Double skulls. He can only win in overtime and he spends the reroll on it. Massive. Cold Trip will be loving that reroll burn there. Maybe should have done this dodge first, seeing as you had a skill reroll for it and wouldn't be risking having to reroll. Like having to reroll that. It was a one in nine as well, right? This is a blockless. So, so to make that one in nine, be willing to reroll it, spend one of your two rerolls, knowing that you can only win in overtime. I think that was a bit of a bad block in terms of he should have done this dodge for first and then made that block. But he's still in it, of course. It's just so hard to hit a Saurus, isn't it? He's got to get three guys on it. Or he's got to like, just Ogre Blitz this one and then use the fact that it's down to do this. Oh, the ogre is stupid. Well, now the decision to just run away from the ogre looks pretty great, doesn't it? Was that the blitz? Did that did that burn his blitz as well? Oh, he's GFIing! Don't re-roll it! No! <sighs> Does he really think he can stop this? Or counter score? Maybe counter score. Maybe he thinks he can he can like force an early score on counter score. He is humans, right? He's fast. Catcher can do things. Can't re roll this. Kill. <laughs> so, skink's gone. 
Yeah, honestly, like he's got that much time. He could just literally go back and croc surf. One, two, three, four, five, six, GFI. Don't honestly don't even hit it, right? Just punch, 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 and then you could even go back. You can do whatever you want now as the lizards, it seems pretty strong. Reach one of these beat K Fog. Uh Call Troop beat the guy who beat K Fog. Um the dwarves, the five guard dwarves beat K Fog. And Call Troop beat the five guard dwarves somehow. <laughs> I don't know how two guard humans beat five guard dwarves, but they did. I mean, I casted it and I still don't know how it happened. <laughs> As he's gonna blitz and go to the other one. Surely. No, well, call troop. He could go for. He could go for the three, uh, four, three, two, two, one D to force the score. Don't hate that at all. Give yourself a, a four turn to score. Don't hate this at all. In fact, I like it as much as you can like any play in <laughs> against lizards. Four three two two one D. Force the score, and then you've got a, uh, and then you've got four turns to to score back and win versus it. <laughs> well, he's already used his blitz there. He was going to blitz and then run. I mean, this is maybe safer, right? You can just dodge him and then run him around. Dodge him out on the three. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Something like this. Or maybe it's just stay more central. There's no need to over pursue. He could have uh, just gone here, right? It was enough. He doesn't have to go all the way over there because they could maybe switch sides. It's the tackler and the stall over here. This might just go, this might force the score anyway. In which case, it was better than going for a 4 3, wasn't it? Another removal. He can always come back, that's the thing. I, you know, he can always just come back. He's got plenty of time. You see people, they, they get like it in their head that they have to keep going forward, but you can always come back and uh, if you've got the time. And they have got the time, so... <laughs> yeah, he could, right? That's so fast, lizards. <laughs> he just goes in anyway. So there you go. Um, Call Troop obviously doing the right play there, not not going for the four three two two, because he forced the score anyway. So here we go. Four turns for the humans to get their drive done and win the game. And there's not a lot of lizards to stop them. Eight lizards. Only five big ones. The humans have a full 11 still. Obviously lost a little bit of quality in the blitzer, but they still got 11 full players. Two rerolls to one. This is looking actually pretty good for the humans. Don't say it's over. <laughs> but dwarf equity is rising in the final. <laughs> Whole troop maybe doing doing Jim a solid here and having to, not having to beat lizards yet again. <laughs> I 
I mean, this is pretty good for humans here, right? They can they can just they can just man off the uh, man off the Saurus and uh... oh, that he caught the ball, he caught the kickoff, and he was one of the guys who was just going to be fed to a Saurus as well. <laughs> but you know, you can just feed this guy to the Saurus and. Uh... You know, do some LOS blocks. This guy's already stunned. He can block and then feed that line out of the Saurus. Yeah, to be fair, Tom, that's understandable. But look, hey, I diced Andre. I can dice Cold Trip as well. Anything's possible. Oh my god. I mean. <laughs> His dice have been on the level of mine versus Andre. To be fair, <laughs> this has been a bit of a bit of a dicing in Call Troop's favour. Yeah, actually, being men up against the lizards is amazing, right? They can just run around and tag the Saurus and. Uh... I mean, there's absolutely zero responsiveness there. This one could uh, come round and tag there. I'm not sure about this. I don't see what this guy's doing at all. gonna hand off I, this just doesn't seem necessary right I would not have handed off at all I just kept it on this guy keep him caged and you know keep keep the catcher kind of like you know as a cage corner yeah I quite like this going for this hit late quite like going for this late this hit late um, but I feel like you just keep the ball on, on the line all right and uh, it, he's kind of less susceptible to rando skink hits and you know, it also gives you an outlet that if you get tagged by a Saurus or whatever, you can just hand it off to the catcher and the catcher can uh, do one. This is looking really, 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 really bad <laughs> for the lizards now. But I mean, he's got the crazy sink player in a way, right? Because, uh, I mean, not really. Yeah, he's got two skinks, so he can just he can just move one skink here. There's a skink hiding, so this skink can go here, and then he can one in pow. Easy, easy. It's a one in six instead of a one in nine, right? Oh no, it would have been a one in four versus a lineman. But he just he just could have been caged anyway. <laughs> he could have just been caged. He does a one d there. Without block. Uh, I guess he was going to chain the crocs to there. And then he was going to get a 2D on him. And then that would have freed the crocs who could have run around and hit the ball. So it was a pretty good plan actually. It just looked fucking stupid, right? Because it was a 1D. <laughs> it was a blockless 1D, so it looked stupid. But the idea was chain the crocs to here. Then that lets him 2D this guy. Uh, and then the Crocs come trying to hit the ball. So there you go. Alright, good news for you. <laughs> the account's good news for you, and he has good news. Um, mm. Is is it maybe a bot? <laughs> Who knows? I mean, it's not GG, is it? It's not over. Don't say it's over. But it's really looking over, isn't it? It's really looking over. For Man, I tell you what. No one can say Call Troop has had this easy. He's If he wins this, which I mean, it really looks like he is going to. 
He'll have beaten three lizard men teams, <laughs> a five guard dwarf team that, that eliminated Kor. And in the first round, he beat Yudlagar with Underworld. So, like, that's quite a flipping run, isn't it? That's quite a run to the final he's had. Unbelievable. Oh, that is good news, but unfortunately, you're banned. <laughs> Humans do seem really strong when they just cast the shit out of Saurus. Yeah, I thought, I mean, no doubt Art will tear them both a new one when he looks at it, but I thought they both played fine, right? I I, I didn't like the foul on the on the ogre, and I didn't like the uh, running through with the skinks early on. Um, but, you know, mostly played pretty well, of course. This is not going to be an easy final in any way, but... Um, I'm sure a lot happier that it's against humans than lizards. Stor, hello Stor. Not cl glads, glads Stor, glads. We're doing glads. Maybe in January, I don't know. Januar. Maybe, we'll see. I, I maybe at Christmas, I don't know. I don't know what I'm doing, honestly. I feel like I should play Underworld. So that I can practice Underworld for the, uh, you know, for the the 5k thing. Like, I could go Dwarf in the 5k thing, but some people will not choose Underworld. And versus people who don't choose Underworld, the uh, Dwarves are going to be worse off, right? If you're not Underworld, you're like Orcs or your uh, or your Lizards, which aren't really, you know, which, or Humans, which Dwarves just aren't very good against. Rats, pretty good against rats, pretty good against elves. So, you know, that's okay. But so are Underworld, aren't they? So. A Blood Bowl cult. Battle Brothers, yeah, not Blood Bowl. Battle Brothers. Many, many sacrifices of Dimmy G. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you could be a puncture bro, so I've never I've never ever built a puncture bro. So if I do, it can be so. It's amazing how I just haven't tried loads of like fun builds because I just can't help myself but be, you know, good. Anything festive? Hmm no. I don't think so. I've got I've got a Christmas hat. I do have a Christmas hat. Maybe, maybe we can get a, f a face cam Christmas hat stream. Who knows? Wow, what a match! I don't believe it. <laughs> it really is unbelievable, isn't it? The humans just smashed the lizards pretty much. But I, he, he shouldn't have scored, right? He could have gone back. That it was so easy for him to go back. I think, I think Fonzo should have gone back. I do think Coltrip played better than Fonzo. Um, but obviously, Coltrip also rolled better, right? Huge Kaz on the Saurus. And uh, but this this like this was Fonzo just offering him up to get hit. There was no need for that guy to get hit that turn. Um, but these two just ran Dorkaz on Saurus. It's pretty good. Yeah, just end the turn. No need to, no need to mess around, right? Because it's it's Res. So uh, there you go. A lovely two-one victory for Call Troop. 
congratulations and thank you, Call Troop. <laughs> this will be a lot more fun final for me. <laughs> playing against humans than lizards. I really didn't want to play a third lizard man team. Uh, much better play more humans. So yeah, it's going to be interesting. It's going to be an interesting game, honestly. Uh, I can't believe he's only got two guard. Um, I think Andre's build was better, you know, with the three guard. I think, honestly, I think just guard instead of the mighty blow would have been better on, on all builds. I think take off the leader, take off the mighty blow, replace them both with guards is the best human build. Um, but yeah, very happy that uh, he's only got two guards. Got loads of players, so you know, might, probably not going to be able to bang him out easily. Um, so yeah, and then obviously we can look at my team here in about five minutes. Um, I think the best build was to not go block on the th on the runner, but to take an extra guard. In retrospect, I would have taken four guard and a mighty and no block, because I've got two runners, right? So I don't need to protect them as much with having two runners. So I think take off a block and an extra guard would have been better, especially with all the lizards, but I didn't expect loads of lizards. So, you know, in my defense, I didn't expect loads of lizards, but I guess, you know, giving you a best chance for guard is pretty good, isn't it? So there you go. Congratulations to call troop commiserations to fonzo thanks for watching everybody don't forget to leave a like and subscribe and stay fantastic